Hey everybody, welcome back to TK Tennis. So today we're talking about Diadem Pro X. I was using the blue version. This is the, I don't know, like grayish slash blue version right here. So let's jump right into it and talk about my experience with Pro X. Okay, so first off, let's jump into the attributes and talk about the control. Um, this is an interesting string, um, not unlike some other strings that are on the market but certainly a high octane string, no doubt. Um, on the control category, it's excellent. It's a very firm string with the exception. I actually should have had an asterisk next to this excellent because I'll talk about that in a moment, sort of the premature snapback that I have encountered before with some strings. But overall, the control is excellent. And that's mostly because this is a very firm string. And when you have a firm string, you tend to have excellent control um, on those particular strings. Uh, moving on to spin, spin potential. So I just always listed a spin, but it's actually spin potential. I have it as a very good. So this is a six-sided string, and when you feel it, it's not particularly sharp. And you'll notice that when you're sw when you're stringing it, it's six-sided, but you can feel some edges to it. But it's not dramatic. It almost feels round, not quite. And typically, once you get the six-sided and especially eight-sided strings, they feel more round than anything else, right? They're so thin on diameter that they typically feel round. But that's not always the case. And the exception is going to be on Solstice Power, which is also a six-sided string that's coming up in my review next. Solstice Power is also six-sided, but you can tell it's much sharper. So it's like concaved edges to these and you can expect more bite probably on the Solstice Power and it's known to be their spin, their most spin optimized string, Solstice Power. But on Pro X, it feels slight edges. So when I was hitting with it, I didn't feel like there was much additional spin. So I wouldn't call this a spin string. I would certainly call it more of a control string with maybe an extra 2% spin because it has a little bit of extra bite. But for most people, that's not going to be noticeable. So when it comes to spin potential, I have it as very good, not exceptionally high, which is what I'm probably going to expect from Solstice Power, but we'll find out. On the snapback category, it's a pretty slick string. Um, snapback is generally excellent, but not always. As the strings start to wear a little bit, they do move out of place again just a hair or two a millimeter or two so that's not like hyper snapback or actually i should say generally it is hyper snapback on this string except when it gets a little bit worn after about four or five hours they'll move a tiny bit so that's why it doesn't get an excellent on snapback moving on to power so i have it as a normal so a typical poly has really nice power but it doesn't give you anything extra and this is no different than most polys it gives you what you expect to get out of it with the exception of if you're not a big hitter you're not a someone who swings really hard at the ball this will actually feel a little bit muted and underpowered but if you're someone like a college player which this string is typically used by a lot of college players and high caliber players it's very elastic it's not very elastic unless you can break through the crust so the power it does give you some power for free if you are a big hitter, like it, if you can break through the crust on your stroke, it will give you the power and maybe even a little bit extra. But for most players, you may not find it. Again, leaning more to the control side of the spectrum versus the power side of the spectrum. And that's pretty typical of most polys. Durability was very high. It broke right around the seven hour mark, which is kind of typical for me on most good polys. So nothing to talk about there. And then moving on to tension maintenance, also a normal to high. So these broke around seven hours and while the strings moved a little bit, not dramatically, but the tension still was there. It didn't get mushy. It didn't get soft. It stayed pretty hyper crisp all the way through, relatively speaking. You know, of course, it's going to get a little bit softer after six or seven hours of banging the ball away, but it, for the most part, stayed very firm. So the best way to describe this string in terms of feel is crisp and firm and partially lively if you can break through that crust. So if you're a big hitter, you have really easy free flowing swings, you're gonna find it to be lively. However, 
for some people can also feel harsh because of that and that's what the asterisk next to partially harsh is if you're not really hitting the ball striking the ball with commitment you're going to find the sweet spot to be pretty small on these strings because it's so firm so if you're hitting right in the sweet spot you're not going to feel any harshness but if you're hitting on the edges of the sweet spot and you're not really committed to your stroke and not breaking through the crust you're going to feel some harshness with the string and that's pretty much a byproduct of who this string is made for um, it seems diadem is going for the same sort of marketing strategy let's say that Solinko had is by reaching out to a lot of college players and giving them a lot of string and sponsoring teams all across the country and it seems like most college players that are using diadem strings or the most popular string that for college players is diadem pro x so it was a really really nice string for the right player so they're overall great i had some requests to sort of change up my grading process because in some string reviews i've sort of mentioned what level player should be using a particular string and i do think that's a really nice way to do it on a consistent basis depending if you're a beginner intermediate semi-advanced or a high caliber player your preference for a string might vary now that preference might also vary by the type of player you are but that's a little bit harder for me to always quantify in terms of a grade so the overall grade for the string for an intermediate player so let's talk about that 3-5 to 4-0 player i give it a C I think most of those intermediate level players probably gonna find this too harsh for them if you notice I don't have a beginner category because beginners really shouldn't be using polys so if you're like a 2-0 to a 3-5 you probably shouldn't be using polys anyway so I don't even have a beginner category here so for intermediate players it's a C for advanced level players so that 4-0 to 5-0 player it's going to be either an A- minus or a B plus. For me personally, for my game, it's a B plus for most days. It's just a little bit too crisp and a little bit harsh for my play, and I don't get anything for free. But many other players who have free-flowing swings and are really committed to their shots are going to see this as an A- minus string, maybe even an A string. Who is the string really for? It's for high caliber players, and that's why most college players are using it. So if you're a person that is really committed to each and every shot, you're gonna really like this string. Um, it's gonna give you what you expect to get out of it, and it's gonna give you the control that you expect. So it's an A-level string for college players, um, and that's very, very obvious. Now one thing I also do wanna mention, the only sort of downside I saw with the strings is what I've also felt with some Toraline strings and restrings strings, some of these hyper slick strings, is once in a while if you're not fully committed to your shot, I call it premature snapback. Is it? Um, I'm not quite sure, but that's what I feel like it is. So if you're sort of decelerator or not fully committed to your shot, once in a while the ball will just really, really fly on you. I found that to be the case with restring zero. Uh, a little bit more often with restring zero but that's also the case with pro x so if you're not really committed to your shot once in a while you're just going to see this abnormal flight of the ball and it goes really long something that you really weren't expecting um, so overall i put the string sort of in between toro line super toro and restring zero in that same family of strings really good strings maybe even between those two and that's where i think it sits in the market so who is it for? It's for high caliber players who prefer high octane strings or big hitters who can squeeze the juice out of this string that, ha that it has to offer. If you like a crisp string but are not high caliber, you might like this as well, but lower tensions are your friend. Um, I don't think you're going to be able to get into the 50s if you're not a high caliber player. I think you should stay away from that and go into the 40s um, if you are considering that and you're not sort of a 5-0 or above. If you're a little off or not attacking your shots, then you'll find some stiffness and harshness on the edges of the sweet spot on the string. So would I use it again? Yes, but only when I'm playing really well, probably indoors, or when the climate is really warm and I get a little bit more flex out of the strings. Right now it's about 65 to 70 degrees on most days. It's getting a little bit cooler and the strings tend to be a little bit too stiff for my personal liking. So that's it for this video. Thanks for watching. Please like and subscribe and drop me some comments and I'll see you in the next days.